Hello everyone, this is Ms. Lina Aude and today I will be explaining you, uh, the weekly video unit number two, uh, unit number one, I'm sorry, weekly two. Um, uh, today I'll be starting with the rigid material. The activities will be conducted inside the classroom. No ice breaking anymore, so let's start. Uh, first of all, on, um, on September 10th, uh, you will uh, sit on for a diagnostic test. We call it pretest as well. As well, uh, you will understand your current level of, uh, of knowledge and skills in the subject matter. You will recognize areas where you already have solid understanding. As for conceptual key terms, what are the concepts that reflect the varied yet related meanings of the unit's themes? Diagnostic test, time management, grammar and syntax, uh, six, uh, syntax of proficiency, effective composition and organization skills. Basically, you're going to be sitting for a writing uh, exam, test, whatever. So uh, this means you need to be able to express yourself. This video explains the meaning of a diagnostic test. And another one provides an overview and some examples of a diagnostic assessment. Uh, if you click on this image, you're going to find a lot of diagnostic uh, one diagnostic test sample. And if you go uh, to your main page, you'll also find another one. Uh, how can the incorporation of compelling anecdotes and real-world examples within your essay not only strengthen your argument's credibility, but also showcase your ability to connect abstract concepts to concrete situations? aligning with expectations of the essay, evaluation criteria for the upcoming English diagnostic test. You can think about it and we can share the answers on Sunday. Uh, attached is an article that provides topic ideas, writing tips and outline examples for English diagnostic tasks. Study it for a practice tool. As for tomorrow, you're going to understand what magical realism is. So for the following day, we will continue with the story, a house taken over. This time we're going to be analyzing. Uh, by the end of this lesson, students will be able to understand magical realism and its effect on Gothic literature. The words ambiguity, magical realism, haunting, sinister, isolation, melancholy, cryptic, ghastly, and phantasmagoria. And of course, over here, you're going to click on the uh, book itself. So what is magical realism over here? Since it's very important to understand the elements of magical realism in Gothic, paradox and contradictions in the story reality overlaps with magic. Explain how the story that the unnamed narrator recited might have only happened in his head. Then you're going to watch the video which explains the ambiguity in Gothic. Uh, you will check your comprehension, which is extremely important. You will briefly describe the house in which the narrator and his sister live. What is the source of sibling's income? How do Irene and the narrator occupy their time? What decision do Irene and the narrator make when they realize that part of the house has been taken over? What happens to the brothers and the sister at the end of the story? Over here, you're going to find another further practice for you to answer in this regard of the story. Uh, the challenge question, why were the French book scarce at that time? How can you relate this detail to the historical background of the story? Over here, another assessment for the whole story, the entire one. And for the next class, we're going to start with grammar, subject, verb, agreement. As for subject, verb, agreement, the following objectives are very important. You will examine and discover subject and verb in a sentence will explain the organization of subject and verb in a sentence pattern. Uh, and here are some key terms that you need to learn. Subject verb agreement, singular verbs, plural verbs, singular subjects, plural subjects. And over here, you're going to find also a link that will transfer you to uh, your ebook lesson once it's activated. Uh, from Khan Academy, uh, I have uh, absolutely found a very, uh, I would say, beneficial, fruitful video for you. It's called Subject Verb Agreement. It's very comprehensive. It will explain it all. And then for activity number one, it's called Fault Finders. You will compose 10 original sentences and then swap papers with a classmate. You will underline the singular subjects in purple and the plural subjects in yellow. And then you will correct any errors they see 
When complete, the student should return the paper to its owner and discuss any changes. This one over here, subject verb agreement video, it's also very useful. For this one over here, uh, you're going to click on the image to access the interactive practice on your ebook. Of course, once it's activated, the verb the practice over here, you're going to find, um, a, 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 I would say, a very basic uh, assessment for you to answer. As for this one, it's going to be challenging. This one, I would say, uh, the standard. And for the next time, you will also learn the irregular plural nouns. As for September 13th, we're going to continue with subject verb agreement. You will explain the rules for subject verb agreement. You will identify and correct errors in subject verb agreement. And the words are as the previous ones, except for irregular plural nouns. And over here, I've added PPT, since we will be able to finish, uh, we will have finished, of course, uh, the, um, uh, the ebook. Here is another video for you to answer, to watch. And as for this one, why does correct subject verb agreement sometimes sound funny when speaking? Give examples. Can flaws in subject verb agreement cloud meaning? And also, I want you to give examples. As for another video, I would like you to watch it, which, which is called Irregular Plural Nouns. Uh, if you will learn the Irregular Plural Nouns, it will help you so much in determining the subject verb agreement. Over here, also another interactive that will talk about only uh, Irregular Plural Nouns on your ebook. Another further practice, a very basic one. Uh, and over here, a set of challenging questions. Over here, you're going to find a standard assessment. And for the following day, we're going to be taking argumentative essays. For the argumentative essays, uh, the objectives are as follows. Students will be able to identify the general layout of an argumentative essay, present central thesis statement or viewpoint on a topic, provide reliable and relevant evidence, facts and examples to back up your claim. A collection of key terms for you to learn, argumentative, thesis statement, introduction, claims, examples, peel model, counterclaim, rebuttals, refutation, conclusion, linking words. If you click on the image over here, you will access the PPT added for you. It will help you a lot in understanding the argumentative essay. And over here, a very basic video for you to understand the layout of the uh, argumentative essay. Or outline and then you will start constructing your essay by writing your thesis statement with some uh, simple explanation and examples and over here uh, you will provide other examples for your own benefits another one is how to write a thesis statement this video explains it all and then if you click on the image over here, it will take you to a number of uh, argumentative essay topics, serve them, and then choose one of them so you can start drafting your essay along with writing your thesis statement. As for further practice, you're going to find samples for you to look at. Uh, as for the channeling question, uh, you're going to access the link attached so you can review possible thesis statement. And based on the link, why is it important for this statement to be narrowed down? Attached over here is an assessment for you. And for the next time, you're going to be supporting your claim, which goes for the following week. Thank you so much for listening.